We use structural induction to show that n of t is greater or equal to 2 times h of t plus 1, where t happens to be a full binary tree, n of t equals the number of vertices of t, and h of t is the height of the tree t. Okay, so first thing what we're going to do is uh, we're going to define a proposition. So I'm going to define my proposition, and this proposition over here is a function of the tree t. So p of t is the statement, is the statement, is the statement that the number of nodes of the tree t happens to be greater or equal to 2 times 2 times h of t plus, plus 1. And, um, and to show you that this expression, that this proposition is true for all t that happens to be a full binary tree. So let's start with the basis here. So with a basis, with a basis, I'm going to go in this in this universe of t, right? So in this universe of t, which happens to be all kinds of full binary, full binary tree, I'm going to choose one of those trees that happen to be the smallest that I can create in this entire set. And the one I can create smallest, as per the recursive definition of full binary tree, is the is the is the tree that just contains just contains one node. So I'll go in this set. I'll put I'll pull one of the trees out that just happens to be the tree that contains a root node. Because this tree that contains a root node is a full binary tree as it contains zero children. It contains no children, it just contains one node and it's a full binary tree. So for this tree out here, what is the height? Well the height of this tree happens to be zero and the number of nodes that are present contains just one. So if so, the basis, the basis for this expression, which is n of t is greater or equal to two times h of t plus one, I can see that the number of nodes happen to be one, which is greater or equal to two times the height of zero plus one, where one is greater or equal to one. So I can see that the basis is correct. Let's state a inductive hypothesis. So. For an inductive hypothesis, for an inductive hypothesis, we're going to assume something. What we're going to assume here is because this is a variation on a strong induction, we're going to assume that uh, let's assume that this tree t, some tree t, happens to be a union of t1 with t2. Okay, so t1 and t2 are smaller trees are smaller full binary trees and when I connect them, when I when I concatenate them, the union of these two smaller subtrees will give me the bigger tree T. Okay, and I want to show you, I want to show you that uh, uh, P of T, that P of T is also true. I want to show you this. I want to show you this is true by using strong induction. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to assume, I'm going to assume the following things. I'm going to assume in my inductive hypothesis that p of t1 is true. So everything in blue is my assumption, okay? In orange, what I'm stating here is something that I want to show you. So p of t1 is true, and I'm going to assume p of t2 is also true. Okay, so first, let's put our assumptions here. This is our assumptions that we are going to assume to be true. So assumption that these are true and we're going to use everything in blue that is true to show you that everything in everything in orange is also is also true so what does it mean for these things in blue to be true well what it means is p of t1 is true so when i go back to my proposition and replace t with t1 that tells me that n of t1 is greater or equal to 2 times h of t1 plus 1 is true and what I do know is that n of t2 greater is, is, is greater or equal to 2 times h of t2 plus 1. So this is my assumption that happens to be that happens to be true. And what I want to show you is this piece in orange, which is n of t is greater or equal to 2 times h of t plus 1. Okay, so how do I show you this piece in orange is also true. But what we'll do first is uh, because my expression over here, my expression over here on the left hand side involves involves the number of nodes, which is n of t. 
I will first start off. I will first start off by by writing everything in terms of in terms of my number of nodes n of t. So what does that mean here? It means that if I if I have a tree, if I create a tree t one, so let's create a tree t one here. So this is my t one. Everything in pink. I'm going to create a tree t two. Okay, some tree t two over here. And when I join them, when I join them by getting some some other root node, I'm going to join them to create a bigger tree t in red here, which is a concatenation of t one and t two. I can see, I can see that uh, I can see that uh, n of t, the number of nodes of this tree t, is equal to is equal to the number of nodes of t one, bigger number of nodes of t one, added to the number of nodes of t two, plus I need to account for this extra node in red there, which is plus one. Okay, so this is a factor. It's a fact that I know that it can take the number of nodes of the smaller tree T1, add it to the number of nodes of the smaller tree T2, and add one to account for all the nodes that happen to be in the tree T. Okay, what can I talk about the height of the tree T? Well, the height of the tree T is basically, in this case, is in this case, everything, everything from this level, up to, up to the leaf nodes, up to the up to leaf node. So let's kind of let's draw another picture here. Just just draw another picture just to get this thing clear. I'm just going to draw T1 again. So this is T1. Everything in green is T1. Okay, I'm just going to draw T2 here. And I'm going to choose my red node. Okay, so as per the recursive definition, everything in blue over here is a full binary tree. Everything green over here is a full binary tree. I'm just going to take a union of the green and the blue tree to create a bigger tree. So this is the bigger tree, right? Take the red node and I connect the red node with the root of the green tree and I connect the red node with the root of the blue node. And this is my bigger tree that I've just created. Now what's the height here? The height of this tree is basically from that level, exactly what I used earlier, up to the max of uh, one of the leaf nodes which happened to be up to there so that's my that's my height here that's the actual height there so how can i define the height of this bigger tree t well the height of the bigger tree t is is i'm going to take one which is everything over here this is one plus the max the max of the height of the green or the blue node so it's going to be one plus the max of the height of T1 and the height of T2. So whatever is the maximum of the height of T1 and T2, take that value, add one to it, and that's going to give you the height of the tree T. Okay, so given everything in orange here, which are, my, which are kind of the facts that I do know about N of T and H of T, and given everything in blue over here that I know happens to be true, I'm now going to show you whether this inequality is also going to be true for this tree T that happens to be the union of T1 and T2. Okay, so first thing what I'll do is I'll start with this expression over here, which is which is n of t is equal to n of t1 plus n of t2 plus 1. Okay, now why did I start with this expression here? Because I'm trying to show you that this that this piece is true. And whatever I have in this pink box starts on the left-hand side with n of t. So it's, it might be a good step to actually start with this expression, which also has n of t on the left-hand side. Now the problem here is that this expression over here has an, has an equality. And what I have to show you is this statement that involves inequality. So how do I replace my equality with an inequality? Well, I can replace that. I can replace that by using, by using the, following, the following thing over here. So I'm going to say... I'm going to say n of t, n of t over here is, is, let's use the assumption, let's use these assumptions that p of t1 is true and the assumption p of t2 is true. So the assumption tells me that the number of nodes of t1 is greater. So I'm going to replace n of t1 with some value that happens to be greater than it. I'm going to replace n of t2 with some other value that happens to be greater than n of t2, which means that what I'll have now is an inequality, I have an inequality where I have 
where n of t1, everything over here, is going to be 2 times h of t1 plus 1. And n of t2, n of t2 is going to be 2, 2 times h of t2 plus, plus 1. Okay, and I have a plus 1 there at the end, and that will be plus 1 here. Okay, so moving along, n of t is greater or equal to, now if I look at my, if I look at the following expressions, which is 2 times h of t1 and 2 times h of t2, I'm just going to put them side to each other, so I'm just going to write this as 2 times h of t1 plus 2 times h of t2. And uh, I've got a plus 1, plus 1, and plus 1. So let's just get all these plus 1s on the other side, which is plus 3. And then finally, finally, just continuing. I just need some space. So let's just continue on this uh, space that I have at the bottom. So n of t is greater or equal to. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the max over here. So remember, everything on the left-hand side is already greater. And uh, on the right-hand side over here, what I've got is 2 times h of t1 plus 2 times h of t2. So what I would do now is I'm going to replace, I'm going to replace, uh, uh, I'm going to do the following thing. I'm going to say, let's, 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 let's say 2. Let's do it this way. Let's say max of h of t1, comma, h of t2. 2 times this plus plus 3. So when I've got the expression h uh, 2 times h of t1 plus 2 times h of t2, I'm just going to replace everything in gray here with a value that happens to be smaller. And by replacing with a value that happens to be smaller, this inequality that I have over here is still going to be preserved. Okay, so when I have 2 times h of t1 plus 2 times h of t2, I'm adding, I'm adding 2 times of h of t1 with 2 times of h of t2. What I'm doing over here is I'm just, I'm just taking the max of whatever is h of t1 and h of t2, meaning I'm dropping either this piece over here or dropping this piece, which however, whichever happens to be the minimum. Whichever is the minimum, I drop that. And because I drop that, the inequality is still going to be preserved. Okay? The inequality will still be preserved. Okay, so, please, I'm just going to rewrite this following the expression as follows. I'm saying with n of t, is greater or equal to 2 times max of h of t1 comma h of t2 and it's plus 3 I'm just going to rewrite it as plus 2 plus 1 okay now what's common what's common in this expression that happens to be highlighted in yellow in this box that happens to be in yellow I can see 2 is out as common so writing this piece on the space over here, I can say n of t, n of t is greater or equal to, take the two out as common, what remains inside is max of h of t1 comma h of t2 plus 1 plus 1. Okay, now what I know from the formula, what I know from this formula is that, is that, uh, h of t, h of t is equal to 1 plus max of h of t1 comma h of t2, okay? So this is the, this is the formula that I'm going to make use of. Well, I do know that h of t is equal to 1 plus max of h of t1 comma h of t2. So coming back, coming back to this expression, I can replace everything. This is the height n, the number of nodes n of t is greater or equal to 2 times everything over here inside it becomes h of t plus 1 which is identical which is identical to what I what I started with which is this piece that I wanted to show was actually also going to be true so I've shown you that these boxes are completely true by using structural induction and using and using and using the assumptions of what happens to be true, which is this piece over here is my assumption one, this is my assumption two, and using the facts about 
about full binary trees in terms of what is the number of nodes. So this could be the fact one that I know about n of t. This is fact two that I know about the height of tree. And by using these, I was able to show you the following expression is also true for the tree t. That's a union of t1 and t2.